How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Something just ended. There was a an ongoing record that was being placed day after day uh, by one of the ETFs, and it just changed. Uh, they actually stopped buying Bitcoin. I want to talk about that. I also want to talk about some of the other news in the market, like what happened yesterday, what we saw uh, on chain, who's selling, who's buying. Is China about to buy a lot of Bitcoin ahead of their ETF being approved? We're going to cover all that. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this video as soon as I post them because some of this is time sensitive. There's also a link to Margex underneath the video where you can trade cryptocurrencies using leverage. You can chart everything right here as well because it is powered by TradingView. It's a different setup too from a lot of ETFs. Uh, a lot of sorry ETFs on the mind. A lot of leverage exchanges, like a lot of them, are cut copy and paste uh, of each other. This is different. They have a different layout. I really like it, uh, and you can use different forms of collateral. So you can use USDC to trade Bitcoin, or Bitcoin to trade Bitcoin, or USDT or Ethereum to trade Bitcoin using those as the collateral for the Bitcoin trade, which is pretty cool. There's also a link to uh, to Coin W underneath the video as well where you can trade cryptocurrencies using leverage or you can just buy them spot and withdraw them to your cold storage or your hot wallet, whatever you want. And you do get access to a trading group, a private trading group. We have 130 people in there with some po with some pro traders as well. Use the link in the description to get access to that. Now, make sure you trade responsibly too. Make sure you know what you're doing. I do have some videos on the channel explaining how to leverage trade. So, just Google my financial friend leverage and you should be able to find it. Let's take a look at what happened in the market today. Yesterday, I guess we went from about 71,000 down to 65,000. Pretty nice drop, less than 10% though. And we have seen many drops like this in the past. Altcoin Daily says we warned you and then shows this chart. We've talked about this in the past too on this channel. There are big drops that happen in bull markets. This is actually the not the last bull market, but the bull market before that. 38%, 38%, 33, 38, 36, 29. This is during a bull market. We see big drops like this. Your portfolio can be cut by 40 or 50% depending on your altcoins. Uh, and that's even if you have like 10 different altcoins and you're well diversified within crypto. You're still going to see big drops. Now, last bull market, we saw shallower drops for the most part. We did see that big drop from 64 down to 30 but we did see shallower drops overall in that bull market and so far we've see, seen even shallower drops here we saw a 20 percent drop after the etfs were approved we saw another drop from seventy four thousand down to sixty one thousand a nice drop there we saw a drop from 69 down to 59 those are less than 20 percent drops though and yesterday we saw less than a 10 percent drop and now it's being bought up it seems now, of course, anything can happen, right? We could be down at $60,000 tomorrow. But right now, we are just seeing higher lows. So overall, I don't think this was that bad. We did see a lot of liquidations, about $730 million worth of longs liquidated. And we are seeing Bitcoin dominance go up. It's creeping up to about 56%, which is quite high. This is breaking the eight-year downtrend that we were seeing going all the way back, I guess, seven year from 2017 to now we broke out against that and we probably will see some resistance around this point here about 57 57.2 percent uh, bitcoin dominance which means bitcoin dominance or bitcoin will still probably be less affected than the alts if we go down it'll probably stay a little bit stronger not go down as much and if we go up it will probably kind of lead the rally now yesterday we saw about two to two point five billion dollars worth of Bitcoin sold by lettuce hands by people that were freaked out by an eight or nine percent drop. We also saw the largest inflow of Bitcoin to exchanges in a week, circa about five hundred million. Bitcoin also saw roughly about one hundred seventy million dollars worth of liquidations, and honestly, I think it's higher. This is coming from James Rand Stratton, but this was from last night. We also saw a five percent drop. And this is shallower than the recent drops that we've seen. So I don't think that this was really all that bad, like I said a couple times. But we did see something interesting. IBIT had strong volume on the day. GBTC 
high volume, FBTC, and so on. GBTC with a $166 million outflow on 412. GBTC is down to 311,650 Bitcoin, almost cut in half. Next day that they trade, they'll probably be down to half what they started with in terms of Bitcoin. Now, BlackRock had a pretty strong day, 111 million. But overall, the other ETFs did not sell any Bitcoin or did not sell their ETF at all. So we did have a net outflow day of 55 million. And this was the first day that Fidelity did not have an inflow. They were zero on the day. Now, something that I find kind of fascinating, it seems unlikely that when there are ETFs that trade 791 million in volume, that they have exactly zero inflows and outflows. Like that is literally the same number of people that bought it, sold it that day, and 791 million in volume, that's, it just seems weird. Right? That means that there's almost exactly 395 million sold and 395 million bought that day. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying here, but th that's such a large number, the 790, and there's not 1 million in difference. I don't know. It just seems weird, especially with all these other ETFs also that had volume that had zero, zero on the day, no outflows, no inflows. I don't know. It seems weird to me. Let me know if you know what's happening there, though, in the comment section. And then coming from Cointelegraph, China is about to start bidding. Will Hong Kong Bitcoin ETFs spark the having rally? The potential approval of the first batch of Bitcoin uh, ETFs in Hong Kong could be a big catalyst for the having's rally. The Securities Regulation Committee of Hong Kong could approve the first batch of spot Bitcoin ETFs on April 15, which is Monday, days before the Bitcoin having is set to cut the supply issuance rate of Bitcoin. The Hong Kong regulator has reportedly accelerated the approval process of four Bitcoin ETFs, according to local news reports. Kind of interesting. Why would you expedite it unless you really want to get in before the halving? Hong Kong's likely to approve both Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs as soon as Monday. China is about to start bidding the same week as the Bitcoin halving. This is coming from Lark Davis. Herbert Sim, who's the... Uh, chief operating officer of a crypto exchange called WebSea, I've never heard of them, commented on this to Cointelegraph saying, he said, with the approval of the ETFs and with the supply cut from the Bitcoin halving, prices will definitely soar. Hmm, interesting. I mean, most people do not say that something's definitely going to happen. So I'm not sure how much weight I would put on this, but I do think this is a big catalyst possibly coming this week. We also have some earnings too from different stocks and different companies. We had some bank earnings the other day, but now we have Goldman Sachs, we have Morgan Stanley, PNC, BNY Mellon, Mercantile, a bunch of banks. Then we also have some tech companies further into the week, such as Netflix announcing earnings. So be on the lookout for that. We could see some more 13F filings as well, companies that are buying Bitcoin. And there are some altcoins that have some news too. Forecat Moto uh, is exploding, uh, apparently selling out. And I say exploding, exploding with interest. They sold out in 11 seconds. There's a video explaining it. I talked about it in yesterday's video. I also talked about UnityPad, a really small cryptocurrency that is risky, but they're trying to be a launch pad uh, and give people access to VC investments, use tokenomics and uh, rewards so that you don't really have to actively go buy a bunch of cryptocurrencies. And it is high risk, but it is up today. It's up 23% even with the rest of the crypto market down. Keep in mind, this is sub $1 million market cap, so super risky. Super risky, not trying to not trying to pump it up or anything either, just shedding some light on something that could be useful to some people because it is hard to get in on all the launches, do all the transactions, make sure you have all your bases covered when you're quite busy. Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. What do you think is gonna happen this week or do you not even care? Personally, I don't really care. If we move up, great, I'm richer than ever. If we fall down, great, I have an opportunity to dollar cost average. Now, I do wanna hear your thoughts though. Definitely check out the links to Marjex and CoinW underneath the video as well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.